Guys, today we're going to talk about living in your vehicle and how it applies to a bug out situation or a, a natural disaster or some kind of evacuation possibility. You know, one of the things about getting in on the road is that, especially in a disaster situation, is that the freeways and the highways can just get clogged up and people can run out of gas, there can be accidents, there can be breakdowns. And so there can be issues to where you may be spending time in your car. You may be getting from one location to bug out to another location. Maybe you're heading to family and friends in a safer area. Uh, and you know you just have to live in your car for a few days. But we're gonna take a look at how people are living in their cars in a normal everyday situation and how that can apply to being prepared. Now, one of the things about SHTF is that it doesn't have to be a national or a large regional event. <laughs> it can be a personal SHTF, and we've talked about that a number of times. You could have a job loss and over time lose your home and really only have your vehicle. And if you have really high payments on your vehicle, you could possibly lose that. And so really the big thing is, is having some kind of way of transportation that you can get out of Dodge if you need to uh, and to be able to live, you know, even temporarily or even could be long term. I mean, let's face it, a car is shelter and you can have some shelter in a vehicle uh, just like you could in a tent. And so bugging out, getting on the road or a lot of other scenarios will apply to what we're going to talk about. Now, first thing is the vehicle. And of course, you can live in a car. I, I read where one guy lived in a Prius for two years. Uh, and it was tough, it was tight, but, you know, he did it. Uh, but, you know, definitely the larger the vehicle, uh, the more room you're going to have, but the more gas you're going to use. And so you need to kind of weigh that out. And of course, you know, a van would be perfect. Um, you know, an RV, definitely. Uh, you could live for an extended period of time in a van. Now, pickup trucks are also a really good option. Because of the bed, you can store a lot of gear back there. And there are even tent options that attach to your truck. Uh, you know, really the thing is, is any way that you can camp is a possibility. Uh, you know, during the Great Depression, people were having to live in their vehicles and they were doing whatever. And that's one of the things about SHTF and one of the big reasons why, you know, I really wanted to bring this to you because you can see what kind of options that are out there. Now, a big consideration is where are you going to spend the night? Uh, you know, having some place that you can remain unnoticed but yet is relatively safe, uh, that's definitely a concern. You know, if you get on private property, you can end up being in jail for trespassing or just be harassed by law enforcement. And that's something that you want to avoid. Uh, even though it's legal, you know, there still can be some harassment. And so some of the areas, though, that a lot of the people that live in their cars talk about are like at Walmart. It's one of the best places. It's just a large parking lot. People are pouring in and out. And Walmart typically doesn't pay attention. Uh, I know a lot of RVs, things like that will park and they have internet service. Uh, they're able to use the bathroom if they need to because typically they're open 24 hours. Uh, but also apartment complexes, hotels and motels. Now while the, a lot of times they'll get your registration number, your license number, they don't always check. And so being able to come in and get some sleep and kind of unnoticed and drive out. National Forest are also a good place. And another place that you can actually pitch a tent, at least for the night, they do have camping areas. Campgrounds are great. Um, you know, having some place to be able to go to the bathroom, uh, and usually in those camping areas, you have that. Um, it is a way kind of to get out of your vehicle and to have a little space and not be molested. Now, also truck stops. Truck stops are a great location. Rest stops, definitely, but sometimes they can be a little sketch. Now, residential areas, typically, you've got to be very creative. Uh, you know, if somebody's parked in front of my house, I notice. Uh, but if there are some areas that you can kind of park to the side where people are, maybe it's in between a house, maybe it's really more toward a vacant lot or a lot or a house that's not being occupied or for sale, that may be a great place to be able to park for the night. What's really crazy is that a lot of places now are actually renting out their driveway or a piece of property for people to live in, uh, at least temporarily. And you can actually put an ad on Craigslist and, you know, and get some place that you can have an overnight stay or two or three if you're in that area. Another great option are hospitals. And because people are coming in and out at all hours of the night, 
uh, hospital parking lots tend to be a good place as well. Now, some of the things though that you need to be careful of is, especially in a bug out situation, is that there could be civil unrest, there could be problems going on, and so you're gonna need to be careful in the areas that you're staying, especially in urban areas, uh, high traffic areas, that could also be a problem. Next are dangerous when you're on the road. Of course, number one, you need to think about and consider self-defense. You know, how are you gonna be able to defend yourself if you are attacked, if you have some kind of problem, somebody starts messing around your vehicle late at night. Uh, of course, a firearm is the ultimate self-defense option, but there are a lot of local and state laws that prohibit having firearms accessible you know, in a vehicle. And if you're in danger of being already accosted by police or questioned, you know, having a firearm in the vehicle can lead to a lot of problems. Now for me, I would highly recommend that be your option, but you definitely need to be aware of, again, local laws. Uh, having, you know, some kind of stick or some kind of way, I mean, there's a multitude of different ways uh, to be able to be able to have a non-lethal way to defend yourself. Pepper spray, uh, you know, whatever it is, to be ready to be able to defend yourself and if your family's with you, that's even more important. You know, having somebody mess with your car, uh, you know, somebody can try to siphon the gas out of your vehicle, so you need to be aware of somebody doing that uh, while you're asleep at night. Situational awareness is definitely critical. Uh, knowing your area, when cars come in, when people come up to your vehicle, being able to know that and, you know, maybe just to be able to get out of Dodge if somebody's messing around. Of course, running out of gas, you know, being able to have enough fuel before you get started on your journey, uh, you know, and then having some cash or some, a car to be able to get gas as you're driving. Also, breakdowns, that's something to think about, maybe having tools in the vehicle for that. And just looking homeless. You wanna keep your hygiene up. You wanna make sure that you present yourself as a reasonable person uh, that has means, if possible. And so keeping clean, keeping yourself in good shape. Uh, your vehicle itself, keeping it in good order. Uh, there's nothing worse than walking by a car, or looking in the, and seeing just trash and, you know, just whether you can tell, they've just piled it in. And, you know, it just really says a lot about that person. And so being careful to remain as tidy and as clean as you possibly can. Unfortunately, if you're living in your car, space is tight. And so you're having to be careful. But, you know, giving yourself a good appearance will really go a long way if you're ever, you know, approached. Now, items that you might need, definitely a cooler would go a long way to be able to keep things fresh. In fact, if you start out, whether it's bug out, whether it's a survival situation, a natural disaster, make sure that you have some ready to eat foods with you. Of course, lifeboat food uh, is great. I mean, those bars have a lot of calories and you can get by for an extended period of time, but also whether it's MREs or, you know, different ways, crackers, nuts, things like that, to be able to give you energy, but let you to just keep on going. Uh, so, but food preparation can be a problem in this kind of situation. Now, if you're at a campground, you can make a fire. If you have a small little cook stove, you can definitely do some things there. But think about those things about food preparation. Also, water. Having some kind of water filtration. Uh, if you're in an urban or just a small town, you can typically get water. But in a grid down situation, uh, maybe you're out in a rural area, having a way to filter water is gonna be critical because there are a lot of creeks, streams, rivers, lakes out there, but not really suitable for drinking water. Of course, having a medical kit is definitely something you want to have. And also with maps, you know, a lot of times maybe your GPS is down. And so uh, a good road map, even an atlas of the entire United States, is according to where you're gonna travel. But make sure that you have some kind of map. In fact, that's a great thing to have in your vehicle anyway. Having a low lumen flashlight, especially at night, being able to you know, see things without attracting a lot of attention, but also having a really good bright flashlight. Uh, and hopefully the flashlight you have will have different modes to it, to where you can shine it and you know, if you need it in a security situation. But because obviously light is your number one security security tool. And it's according to the weather, but being able to stay comfortable, you're not going to necessarily have heat. So having, you know, pillows, blankets, things like that, you know, even in the spring and fall, and even some summer nights can really get cool. Now we talked about it earlier, but having a good tent could give you a break. Uh, if you're in a certain area, if you're in a camping area, if you're in a national park or a national forest, you can pull out your tent, 
you know, take a couple of nights to sleep in the tent instead of being crammed up in your vehicle. Uh, and then also sunshades. Now sunshades are great because people use them and you can put them up in your window and it keeps people from being able to necessarily look in. Uh, for me, I have tinted windows in the back of my vehicle, so it makes it somewhat secure. But, you know, it's better than putting a sheet up on the front. That really lets people know that, you know, there's something unusual going on. And if you're on the road for an extended period of time, you know, you're going to need to have some way to make money. Uh, and so being able to find small odd jobs if you need to, uh, you know, you may, then you'll be able to actually probably leave your vehicle there. Uh, so, you know, finding some things like that that can help you to supplement, to pay for gas, if you need repairs, if you just need supplies, which food, and water, things like that, I mean, there are definitely going to be some expenses. Now, we can carry a certain amount of cash with us, but over a long period of time, you know, it could get to the point where you need those funds. Uh, but also, items to barter. And so, if you do have those items, tuck them away, and maybe you can barter and get the things you need especially gasoline and food if you're on the road. And last but not least, guys, be respectful wherever you are, even in a total grid down situation. You know, be courteous, you know, be clean, don't leave litter laying around, you know, keep your appearance again clean, and you know, just have respect, keep the noise down. You know, you have a radio you're playing, make sure that it's low and that you're able to enjoy it, but you're not disturbing other people. While this definitely can apply to a grid down SHTF situation where you need to get on the road, sometimes again, you have that personal SHTF. Whether it's loss of a job, maybe you're going through a nasty divorce and you don't have a place to live. Uh, you know, there's a number of different things that can happen where you find yourself in your vehicle out on the road. And so hopefully you can take this, be able to formulate a plan, guys. At least think about it. And it's one of the important things. You know, your mind is your number one tool for survival. And so the more that you're thinking, the more that you're planning a little bit ahead of time, the better off you're going to be in a crisis situation. So guys, if you're serious about survival and prepping, check out Survival Dispatch Insider. Uh, some of the top world leaders in survival and prepping are contributors there on the Insider. We upload one exclusive video a week on the Insider. I'll have a link down below. Check it out. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.